Hello, shall we start? OK. Uh, thank you all for coming. Uh, I really appreciate uh, your presence here, especially because uh, there are kind of three concurrent uh, uh, sessions. So today I'm going to uh, tell you the story about our latest project. Uh, actually, it's going to, the, it's going to be deployed to, to production today. Uh, uh, it's done for our uh, clients, uh, HRP International. So uh, um, they are somehow SharePoint-based organization, and uh, they still wanted to, to use uh, blockchain as a backbone of their one solution. So why the title? Uh, uh, it's a bit uh, tricky. Uh, we wanted to also show you that it's, prob it's possible to uh, combine uh, closed source projects like uh, and. Uh, Paid software like uh, like SharePoint with uh, with open source. Uh, my name is Dominik Zyskowski. I'm consulting director in uh, SPL Blockchain, uh, and we as a company are one of uh, Hyperledger certified service providers. So we are service-based company, and we we do projects for uh, for clients like HLB who want to adopt blockchain into their uh, uh, ecosystem and into their processes. Uh, the agenda is as follows, so uh, I still want to go a bit deeper into uh, the comparison between uh, SharePoint and, uh, and Fabric. Uh, then uh, we'll tell you more about the business case that we, that we handled uh, within that project. Uh, also show you the architecture of the solution that we built. Mm, give a demo and some, some uh, kind of final words about what we learned during, during that project and uh, what can be the next steps uh, in the further development of this solution. Uh, so as I, uh, as I told you, uh, Fabric and, uh, and SharePoint uh, mm, are totally kind of different words. Uh, from one side we have uh, open source project that is ma maintained and uh, developed by many people around the world. On the other hand, there is a Microsoft-based system uh, that is their proprietary software, and uh, it's uh, it's not open source. You you cannot kind of commit as an external person to that uh, to that code base. Uh, another issue uh, or another fact is that uh, this company, uh, Microsoft, uh, they are not kind of that that much into the blockchain space. Uh, from what I know, they, they, they used to be the, the, even the member of, uh, of the Hyperledger Foundation. They had some uh, managed blockchain solutions offered, but uh, last year they resigned from that. And uh, that also shows the, the engagement and uh, the, the, the directions that they uh, selected within that technology. Uh, SharePoint and, uh, and Fabric. Mm may be about uh, storing the data in a secure and, uh, and trustworthy way, uh, although uh, they have mm, totally different uh, mm, um, philosophies behind. So from one side, we have a centralized solution uh, with uh, centrally kept uh, access rights and, uh, and permissioned roles. On the other hand, uh, Fabric is about trying to provide a decentralized uh, way of uh, accessing the data, still with uh, allowing for uh, having different permissions across different, uh, uh, different, uh, different users. Uh, data governance uh, models are also a bit different. In Fabric, we have uh, uh, the parties that uh, um, somehow allow to, to uh, determine the access rights uh, of, uh, of other uh, organizations and, uh, and users that uh, <coughs> uh, form the network. Uh, in SharePoint, we have centrally uh, uh, managed uh, um, user management, permissions management, and also the data storage. Uh, we encountered a number of, uh, of solutions to, to uh, uh, store content, store the data. Uh, on the blockchain side, on the fabric side, we, uh, uh, the data's uh, transparency, immutability is, uh, uh, is guaranteed. On the SharePoint side, uh, there might be the attempts to, to tamper with the data because uh, the person that has a, 
uh, top admin rights is able to uh, overwrite and uh, delete uh, data from that system. Uh, at the end of the day, we uh, we managed as a company and uh, together with our, with our clients to uh, combine those two words and uh, to, to take out the best of, uh, of, of both solutions in order to build a successful system that uh, uh, caters for the users on, and uh, allows to, to uh, follow the business process uh, as, uh, as it was planned. Uh, the business case is about uh, exchanging uh, referrals between the member firms of uh, HRB internationals. So HRB is a global network of uh, accounting and uh, advisory companies. They work on, under umbrella of uh, HRB, but in fact, uh, every country uh, has its own kind of uh, business entity that is independent from uh, one from another. Uh, they use totally different uh, invoicing systems, uh, ERP systems, and, uh, and all the systems that uh, uh, handle the, the operations of that companies. Uh, and the only common, common uh, tool that is used uh, worldwide is, uh, is SharePoint, which is a communication platform uh, for them. So uh, the issue uh, or the, the business problem that the, the, the client had is to, um, to handle the uh, referral process uh, uh, in case that, let's say, the company from uh, or the member company from Ireland wants to uh, refer clients to the uh, to the member uh, company in uh, in Germany, uh, and if that lead becomes a client, there should be a fee kind of uh, paid to the to the company that referred the clients to the receiving uh, member firm. Uh, up till now, it was happening through kind of. Uh, emails or phone calls or uh, some some kind of uh, uh, off uh, offline uh, uh, messages, and uh, therefore it uh, it was quite uh, cumbersome for the uh, global office of, the, of HLB to handle the disputes between the member firms to uh, to settle the uh, the payments that were due, and in fact. Uh, mm, the team of, of a few people in the, uh, in the um, uh, executive office of that company uh, was spending like a few weeks every year to, to handle manual disputes, handle the settlements and uh, clear the payments between the, the companies that, uh, that were involved in the referral process. Of course, there was no single source of trend and, uh, and, and therefore uh, it was quite hard to follow who referred the company to who and uh, whether that, uh, that lead was uh, uh, really converted to the client and what were the payments associated and so on. So uh, although the process looks kind of quite, uh, quite simple because having uh, uh, a referral offered to the company, the company that uh, receives a referral can either reject that or accept and then they need to contact the client, they need to uh, to make a proposal and uh, the proposal may be successful or, or not and uh, after the proposal is successful the, the cooperation start, uh, started with the client there is uh, some, some billing, some invoicing and uh, the company that referred the client should, uh, should be awarded with some percentage uh, from the uh, total value of the, of the deal. Uh, we took over with our client wanted to uh, automate and uh, somehow digitalize the process with using the tool that everyone in the company is using. So with using the uh, user interface uh, uh, from the SharePoint, but still to have the uh, centralized uh, place in which uh, the data is trustworthy and uh, it's uh, validated and no one can, uh, 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 can say that the uh, the, the, the data or, or the uh, referral uh, was kind of uh, fake or uh, not uh, uh, not valid. So we uh, we came to the conclusion that uh, that fabric uh, that blockchain technology uh, can be a a, a good uh, solution to that to that problem. 
the architecture of the uh, system that we built uh, is uh, kind of simple. Uh, we didn't want to, to, to build a very complex uh, uh, fabric network. Uh, so uh, actually the, the, the software that, uh, that was implemented here uh, can be divided into two uh, logical um, uh, parts. One part is this backend system that uh, plays the role of a middleware uh, uh, between the uh, SharePoint UI and the, uh, the fabric network. It's written in Java and uh, listens to the uh, events that coming from the SharePoint, events uh, that uh, are related to the uh, change of status of, the, uh, of a given uh, referral, and also uh, change of status of a uh, billing that is associated with a particular referral. Uh, we have uh, two uh, um, virtual machines uh, uh, with, uh, with blockchain nodes. So one, one fabric node is uh, actually each, uh, each fabric node is in different uh, region. And uh, the, the, the topology of that network is, uh, is quite uh, simplistic, but that was kind of good enough for the kind of the, for this first uh, implementation uh, for HRB because in fact, it, it's the, the first blockchain project that they, that they uh, realized and uh, the first blockchain project that is going to be released to the production and it's happening today. So uh, also I didn't want to mess with the environments and I recorded the demo uh, before the meeting in order not to, not to break anything uh, 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 for my colleagues that are kind of working hard to, to deploy the, uh, the software to the production. Uh, so the demo is, uh, is recorded. Let me let me play that. So here, basically, we have a kind of normal dashboard uh, that that uh, uh, HRB users can see. Of course, this is the admin view, which means that uh, we are able here to to switch users. But normally, the the users uh, can see only the. Uh, uh, the elements that they are uh, able to see on, on their on their boards and uh, uh, this particular uh, widget uh, can be used to, to uh, create new referrals and send them to the to the other company from the HRB uh, uh, group. So here we, we want to create the, the referral. Uh, we are now the uh, entity from uh, Armenia and we want to uh, to refer the, the client to the uh, uh, Vietnamese uh, branch. Uh, we need to specify the, uh, the data or the details of the person that will receive the, uh, the referral, also the uh, information about the client, like first name, last name. All this data uh, is stored to the blockchain, to the ledger, and uh, uh, it's also important that uh, uh, we store on the on the blockchain all the data associated with the with the referral. It's uh, it's not a big amount of data, so we decided to to store everything. Here we also uh, determine the uh, uh, the field of the service, the, the type of uh, the industry of the client, and uh, and we can send the referral. Yeah. Uh, with sending the, the referral, we also specify the predicted uh, uh, value of the uh, of the deal. So let's see what happens next. Uh, in the uh, in the Hyperledger uh, Explorer, we are we are able to to see whether the uh, this transaction uh, gets to the block. For now, it's not uh, uh, it's not there yet, but in a while it should be submitted to the uh, to the ledger. Uh, yeah, we can see that this particular transaction, this particular referral uh, landed in a, uh, in a block. We can, uh, we can uh, uh, see the, the details of the, of the transaction. Uh, so for now, this uh, new client is, is handed over and the uh, Vietnamese entity will be able to to see it on the dashboard uh, when it uh, it gets to the 
uh, to the ledger. It's quite important also for the users that they are able to see whether the particular uh, referrer already uh, made it to the uh, to the blockchain. So uh, we also added uh, uh, this type of uh, uh, indicators that show that the particular referral or particular event uh, or billing uh, uh, was was added to the to the ledger. And now we are switching the, the context to the Vitamins uh, entity. We see uh, that in the in the receive referrals uh, uh, we see the, the the new one. And now what what usually happens? It's that uh, the discussions with the client they last for they may last several months. Yeah. So all the all these statuses of the uh, of the particular referral uh, will be also stored on the. Uh, on the blockchain, uh, on the uh, fabric level, in order to, to, to see when the particular status was changed and uh, what was happening uh, with that. We need to somehow uh, go faster with that. So we, uh, uh, we change the statuses like from the accepted to contacted. Then the proposals should be sent and uh, if the, clients, the client uh, accepts that the, the deal is done and uh, we uh, we have a client, yeah. So we also need to make sure that uh, all these uh, uh, changes uh, get to the block, and uh, it needs to take uh, uh, several seconds to uh, to be processed. But uh, finally, we uh, will be also able to see in the Hyperledger Explorer that uh, those transactions, those uh, statuses were uh, were changed, and they were added to the uh, to the ledger. The amount of data uh, added to the chain is quite uh, minimal. It's, it's, it's simple uh, JSON file that uh, that gets uh, gets uh, saved in the chain. Uh, but it's also quite important to the uh, to the users that they uh, they may really trust that uh, this data is uh, uh, is really stored. They uh, will not be uh, it, it will not be changed, and uh, uh, it also increases the uh, uh, amount of trust between the companies yeah. uh, that are still in the the same network, but uh, they, they they may not uh, done any did an, uh, any business before. So here we uh, we can see the list of transactions, uh, and we can see that uh, the company was the status was uh, changed to contacted. Uh, so another. Uh, Transaction in the ledger is uh, is a new status. You know, it's the status uh, uh, proposal was sent. Next one will be uh, hopefully succeed, which means that the that, that the uh, deal was uh, was done and the the client restarted the cooperation with that particular company. It should be visible here. Yeah, success. So when the uh, when the cooperation is started, it's important to uh, to add the uh, invoicing and billing details to the uh, to the system because it will be a base for kind of uh, making the payments and settlements between the uh, company that won the deal and the company that uh, referred the client. Uh, so, uh, with adding every new uh, billing item to the uh, to, uh, under this particular uh, deal, we need to specify uh, some uh, some data, like uh, of course the amount of the invoice, uh, maybe some comments, and uh, and simply add it to the uh, uh, to the system. Uh, and that's basically it from the uh, uh, scenario point of view. So all the data, as you can see, the billing row has been added to the system. So uh, when the user logs in next time, uh, she will see that uh, um, that the, the data was synchronized with the uh, 
with a blockchain uh, with Fabric, and uh, from now on, this uh, this data may, may be used as a uh, as a uh, way of uh, settlement and uh, uh, way, way of uh, having the transaction uh, between the those two companies. So that was the demo. Uh, and uh, what we have learned uh, from this project. So um, we, re we really wanted to, to uh, um, really wanted to introduce blockchain uh, as something that's uh, really transparent for, for the end users. Uh, since this, this system is going to be used by, uh, uh, by a few, few thousand uh, people around the world, uh, we didn't want to kind of to introduce something that's uh, that has uh, uh, very uh, uh, complicated uh, uh, UI. Uh, we also wanted to to, to uh, make uh, users uh, use the system that they already know, and uh, also show that blockchain uh, a layer uh, doesn't uh, doesn't have to be something scary. Uh, as next steps, uh, uh, there are plans to, to introduce uh, uh, internal tokens in order to settle the transactions between the receiving and uh, 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 referring companies. It also uh, turned out that it's quite uh, uh, easy to integrate both open source and uh, closed source uh, projects. So that's all. I'd like to thank you for your attention. I also wanted to uh, invite you for the uh, to the meetup uh, and webinar that will be held twenty uh, eighth of uh, September to be about the deployment of hybrid networks uh, through uh, with uh, Kubernetes. Thank you. Yeah, we can. We, we have two I questions. Ask about the GDPR and mm -hmm. how to handle the GDPR because we saw all the data from the blockchain perspective. Mm -hmm. So, I, I, in my opinion, every participant of the network can see all the data. And uh, even though if uh, the, the client isn't actually turned out to be a customer, mm -hmm. the data should be removed from the ledger uh, because there is a right to be forgotten in the GDPR. Yeah, so how do you handle yeah, I will uh, repeat that question for, for, for those who are uh, online. So the question is about uh, handling uh, GDPR uh, uh, within that system. Uh, so the regulations is that, that uh, uh, those clients are already there because uh, um, the company has clients that they, are, they have been working with and uh, they may refer the, this, this particular client to the, to the other, other entity. And... Uh, uh, the client's data is not on the blockchain, so so uh, so only the the events related to, to referrals uh, are are stored for now, and uh, there are no plans to to handle the uh, kind of right to forget about uh, the client. Uh, we might kind of somehow uh, make a workaround by adding only the the hash of the client to the to the ledger and uh, uh, leaving the client's data uh, into the the original system. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you. Okay, since there are.